We're going to be talking about this whole new push by leaders to have a uh, preparedness of sorts in the population. Uh, and uh, as of this uh, actual broadcast, from what I understand, we have um, uh, certainly Angela Merkel, uh, who started the ball rolling, <clears throat> and uh, Finland, <clears throat> excuse me. That's true. Um, Finland, uh, Czechoslovakia, Czech Republic, I guess, and uh, also now, uh, as of last night, from what I understand, Obama is now urging American people to do the same, which is an interesting dynamic. Uh, so, Simon, I uh, want to welcome you uh, and want to put up this uh, identifying poster for just a moment here so we can get that on the screen and then we'll we'll put you on the screen so uh we are going to be talking about these uh sudden announcements uh about simon parks's recent broadcasts of which there were two that i'm aware of uh one uh initially uh about angela merkel and her announcement a possible false flag we then had an attempt on her life or what appeared to be an attempt on her life. We're not sure whether that was a real occurrence or, or a staged one. And then, uh, then suddenly other governments coming forward saying similar things to their people and uh, a marshalling of U.S. forces uh, on the border. And I, I actually want to get straight where exactly they are because that's, that's an interesting dynamic. Um, from my point of view. So uh, so now I'll put Simon on the screen and, and we'll just get, get rolling here. Um, so I'm not a morning person, it is morning, so <laughs> bear with me uh, in California and, and we're working on European time here. So Simon, welcome. Uh, you are now visible to the, to the audience. Go right ahead. Well, thank you, Kerry. It seems an age since we were last together in London doing your conferences, um, which, <clears throat> by the way, were, were brilliant. Thank you for doing that. Um, I'm very yeah. glad to uh, have the opportunity to talk um, very importantly to the American people. Uh, so thank you for giving me that opportunity to do that. Uh, I, you're quite right. I did two um, announcements on my own website, which other websites carried. And it's very interesting, I'm not going to name any names, but I did the first um, alert, that's the way I prefer to call it, and the number of people in other websites who said, oh, Simon Parks is talking nonsense, it's rubbish, etc., etc., and then less than one day later, there was a, an alleged attempt um, to kill Angela Merkel. And I'd actually said in the first broadcast, that the elite had lost patience with her and had put her on notice. And fortunately, that seems to have shut up a number of people because um, my warning was literally something like 24 hours before the, the, the attempt on her motorcade. Then I did another follow-up um, and um, delighted to have the opportunity. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, but you've got this big explosion that's just occurred in the Kennedy Space Center. Um, uh, no, I hadn't heard that news. Okay, uh, I, I heard about it before it went on the mainstream news. Uh, I've notified all of my connecting consciousness coordinators. Um, this has just very recently happened. I don't think you guys will have even been told about it yet. Uh, I don't know whether this is a false flag, whether it's just an accident that's occurred, but I can tell you that it's non-nuclear, although there is a, uh, I, I tell you what, I'll share a screen with you. I got a photograph that someone sent me. Would you like me to do that? Please, excellent, yes. Okay, right. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna look for uh, any news that we see. Okay. Ah, you're kidding, SpaceX, an explosion. Okay. Oh, you've got it. This is what the remote viewing might have been about. Exactly right. That's why I'm sharing it with you. Can oh. you see the picture on my screen? All right. Hold on one moment. Uh, yes, I do. 
All right. Okay. Well, this so is very a interesting. Center, and I got told perhaps four minutes after it occurred before the main news. And so I've shared it with my Okay. Um, yeah. Hold, hold on one second. This stupid. Um, okay. Yeah. Go right ahead. Uh, could you just repeat, repeat those for a few um, words? I will. I'll just um, stop sharing the screen. It'll save the bandwidth. All right. Has it gone from the screen now, Kerry? Yes, it has. And, and, and you should uh, be I got back. that within, within four minutes of it occurring. And what I do when I get information like that is I put it around all of my connecting consciousness coordinators uh, in Europe and America. Um, didn't, didn't do the British coordinator because this didn't have impact for Britain, but it does certainly for the US and America. And all I can say at the moment is the information that I was given was that it was not clear whether this was a false flag, whether it was a deliberate explosion, or whether it was an accident. So I just wanted to alert you to the fact that there's been an explosion with a mushroom cloud, which is non-nuclear, uh, over the Kennedy Space Center. All right, thank you. Now I'll, I'll go on to the, the subject you talked about. Uh, the, <clears throat> the established media have successfully hidden from most people the fact that over the last six weeks, American military forces have been building up, not just in Germany, but in many of what we would call the, the low countries, moving upwards through. Uh, you asked where they are. The, the military armor, the American armor, has moved up to the border with Russia, but it is also in the number of uh, German towns. So it is not a defensive posture. It is an aggressive posture. Now, that's a key point. Over the last three weeks in Great Britain, the number of um, uh, British and American transport aircraft, the, 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 the amount of their journeys to and from Europe uh, has been incredible. And they have been seen coming back empty. Now, we haven't got any pictures of them going out, but I personally have seen them arriving empty. So basically, I believe they're taking armor, sending it across to, to mainland Europe, and then coming back and reloading. So there's been a resupply operation for the last six weeks, but the peoples of the world were not told that. So I want your listeners please to understand that this has been a planned operation. This has been built up, but it's leaking out now because it's only so long that you can hide thousands of troops and hundreds of tanks. There comes a point when the lid comes off the boiling pot and people start to see it. So it, in answer to your question, up towards the, the border with, with what would perceive to be the old Russian border, um, but also in towns um, and key locations, but not in a defensive role. Okay. Uh, I want to allow you to, t to give whatever other information you might have gotten in the interim, but okay. I, I will have some drill down questions. Uh, so why don't we let you deliver everything, and then when you're ready, I'll, I'll start with the questions, okay? Thank you. Um, we need to understand that the two world wars have occurred in Germany. Now, it's not, it doesn't matter who was guilty or not. The fact is that they've always started in Germany, and any third world war <clears throat> was always targeted to start again in Germany. When a banking system is on the verge of collapse, the elite, and I'll name Mr. Rothschild, the elite will seek to have a war to reinvigorate the banking system, to reinvigorate the economy and start all over again. But we've got two aspects to this, which we've not had before. The first aspect is the satanic arm of the Illuminati, who are quite happy for Jacob Rothschild and his gang to um, engineer a situation that causes uh, a collapse of some sort. But unlike the Rothschilds who want to just step back and then take the profit from it, this satanic group wants a complete war. So they're not interested in profit. What they're interested in is, is reducing the population and bringing the Western economies to an absolute turmoil. And we've not seen that before because the Second World War and the First World War were controlled. Now, this situation is not controlled. 
And one of the big players here is President Putin, the Russian uh, president who cannot be manipulated by some of these very bad people in the West. Um, what was supposed to happen was that Russia was going to react to the, mil the American military buildup and give a reason for the United States to launch some form of preemptive strike. Mr. Putin has not done that. That's made it difficult. Now let's look at Angela Merkel. If I was the Chancellor of Germany, if I was Angela Merkel, and I really cared about my country, and somebody came to me and said, um, you're finished economically, so what we're going to do is we're going to destroy your country, um, but don't worry, it's for the greater good. I don't think I would be very happy either. And what, what Merkel did was basically send a message to the negative Illuminati saying, we're ready for the worst. And actually, they just increased their warning. Their warning was 10 days worth of food and 10 days worth of water. Uh, today, that's been increased to 14 days. So they're now looking at two weeks. For the last two years, I've always said you need three weeks worth of food and three weeks worth of water. So they're now talking two, two weeks. So what they did was they sent a message saying, OK, do your worst. We will um, bring in a form of conscription. We will increase our army. We will have our uh, petrol, our gas, uh, our food and water supplies at major dumps all over Germany, which they're doing now. We will make our citizens self-sufficient and we will fight. Now, that was not expected. What they thought was Angela Merkel would just roll over and do what they wanted. Now, that's good for Germany but it's very bad for the United States of America and for my country, Great Britain. And I'll, if you give me the moment, I will explain why that's bad for us, but good for you. We then had other countries following it, as you quite rightly said. People know the country is Czechoslovakia, although really it's called the Czech Republic. They followed suit immediately and said, yes, you've got to put food and water away. But something that's not been reported, the president of Czechoslovakia had a private conversation with his prime minister and the president of Czechoslovakia asked his prime minister, was it feasible to give every citizen a gun? Wow. I actually asked the prime minister, could we do that? Now, I haven't had an answer whether that, but that was definitely asked. That's how serious it is. Then we had the Finnish government in Finland who shares a border with Russia saying the same thing, food and water supplies for uh, 10 days. And then we had a general in the Norwegian army suggesting that all Norwegians should be armed. So we have a, a very big um, situation occurring in that area because they know that something is happening. What they think is going to happen is going to be a war. I don't believe there is. But I think that there could have been had we had anybody other than President Putin. What we have got is a huge crash coming, and I'm going to name the banks. Deutsche Bank will be the first to go. Then it's either going to be Citibank in the United States of America or Barclays Bank in Great Britain. But when those three banks go, there will be an economic collapse in the Western world, and there will be no food and water for a period of about three weeks. So I think that these major countries bordering Russia are not so concerned about a war, they're more concerned about a deliberate attempt to bring an economy down and um, their countries being very weak to protect that. So, so that's, that's the first thing. The other thing I want to say is for the last six weeks, there have been tanks moving through Romania. Uh, that's not been widely known, but American tanks have been landing and been put down in places where the media can't find them. They've made their way through Romania to these positions. Don't just think of one place the tanks are coming through. All right, well, let's quickly then move across. Why is this bad for, for, for my country and America? Because uh, no matter what the media says, private polling in the United States of America shows Mr. Trump is, is with 60% of the vote. Privately, uh, Mr. Trump is going to win the election. Now, 
you know that you have some very outdated <clears throat> machines that count your votes, deliberately so. It's possible to alter upwards of a million votes, but the majority, <clears throat> excuse me, the majority that Mr. Trump would get is so great that those counting machines could not alter the election. He would still win. So there's a real chance that President Obama will seek to postpone your November election. And you can't do that unless you have a national emergency. When the two towers came down, nobody talked about martial law. They all talked about bombing another country. But if there is uh, another tower or something that happens, the first thing they'll do now is martial law to uh, hold off the presidential election. There are two power factions in America that are key at the moment. One is the politicians at Capitol Hill who are working through the Clintons, Hillary Clinton, and the other is the part of the military, but only part of the economic industrial complex who are supporting Donald Trump. If Donald Trump becomes president, he will wipe away Capitol Hill and the system that has been there for such a long time. So the politicians in Capitol Hill uh, want to stop Donald Trump at any price. Uh, I don't know how many of your, your, your viewers have seen the man with the hypodermic needle standing next to Hillary Clinton, trying to keep her awake and on her feet. Uh, she does all her campaigning from inside. She can very rarely go out. Um, uh, and some information which perhaps nobody else might have come forward with. Uh, Hillary Clinton has been offered a clone double, not a body double, a clone double. She has declined that because she knows that if she allows a clone in, they will terminate her body because they won't need her anymore. She's trapped. I feel very sorry for her, actually. She's fighting an election that she doesn't want. She's completely manipulated. And this could well be the last free election that you have in the States for quite a while. So that's my news. However, I want to finish it by saying this isn't the end of the world. This is not about cataclysm and we're all doomed. This is literally about a phase that we need to go through to come out the other end and be completely reborn. So we don't need fear. We don't need to be scared or concerned in that way. We do need to take precautions. We need to be safe. And we need to realize that the official media will not be telling us the truth. So I say again to everybody, form groups, Keep in touch. If you've got a citizen band radio, use that because they can't jam all of it and try and keep in touch with everyone and be safe and um, hold on to what you believe in. Just because someone says something on the news doesn't mean that's happening. So I don't want to end um, Kerry in a, in a, in its, you know, with my hands waving in the air saying, you know, the end of the world is nigh because I don't believe that. <laughs> And I just want that. To, I don't want that message to be the energy message here. It's actually a positive message. Um, you and I and many others know we have to go through some pain to come out the other end. Absolutely. Uh, well, thank you so much, Simon. Uh, I've got, as you can imagine, a number of questions, and I, I do want to say that uh, we are in a, a very strange situation. And um, I, I, I ha you know, as Camelot, we were given certain information in advance, and uh, we were told that their deadline is coming up, that the end of 2016 and 2017, uh, first of all, end of 2016 was to do the reset, the financial reset, and we were told this many years ago. So it appears they're trying to keep with their schedule. I, I think what is also happening with everything else is that they're not on schedule and they don't know how between now and the election to do the reset and they don't know if they can get the reset to happen right after that but for some reason that i don't know there's something about getting it done in 2016 and then 2017 is a whole nother ball game uh that may involve uh manufactured earth changes in essence uh ones that are man-made so this is what we have been told um and you know i'm just putting that forward uh to sort of augment where you're going and i'm sorry we have this 
leaf blower thing outside. Um, so, but I, I do want to say that uh, it, it is very interesting, this dynamic that has to do with World War I and World War II, um, using Germany as a jumping off point. And I wonder if you can focus a little more on why Germany and why you think that that somehow I mean it, it actually sound what it sounded to me as though is that Germany was holding back from uh, maybe sending troops on the ground to Syria because what they really want according to uh, Leo Zagami all those years ago is to begin our Armageddon this is a very important this is all part of it so um, they don't seem to be getting Armageddon to happen and I do think Putin is behind the scenes uh, sort of halting that. Uh, I think Turkey tried to get out of it and then uh, the uh, Erdogan was, was gonna be you know, deposed and then he got back into line and he got his country back and now he, he just in lockstep went right into Syria right after that. So I don't think that's an accident. Um, I think that Italy, the, uh, we have lots of information that the Italian quake was a targeted hit using the tectonic weapon. And I believe possibly Italy is not on board with sending troops on the ground either into Syria and getting uh, this whole thing escalated. So uh, what do you have to say to all that? We'll work backwards. Um, everything you've said I agree with. I've never actually disagreed once with anything you've said, Kerry, because you <laughs> obtain information from um, different sources than me, but they're, they're coming from perhaps the same place, so it's actually accurate. I would just add that um, the uh, it was it was absolutely, I believe, from what I've been told, a targeted energy attack in, in Italy to produce the earthquake, but it was also a testing to try to um, get the right type of quake and I've been warning about the San Andreas Fault, um, California, and I think that they used it also to see, can you produce a earthquake that doesn't trip everything, <clears throat> but just has a limited damage area? And it's very, very hard, I think, when you're playing around with Mother Nature uh, and you're trying to do that. But I think that they were using it because I still think there's a chance they may attempt the San Andreas Fault if they don't get their own way everywhere else. Um, and it was 150 miles, I think, south of Rome in Italy. Uh, it, was in, it was in a place that caused damage, but not excessive damage. Mm -hmm. So that's the first point I'd say, so I totally agree with you there. Um, we cannot talk about this without mentioning the Kazakhstan Jews. Uh, as a Jewish person myself, have always made a difference between being a Jew and being a Zionist. They've always made the difference. And I wish more commentators would actually understand the difference. Um, there are a group of these people who are hell-bent, and I use the word deliberately, hell-bent on fulfilling their own prophecy. And these people have had um, great influence in 9-11, um, situations with Mars, um, the royal family in England, many, many things. These, these people are, uh, wherever there's an issue, generally speaking, we would find this group, and there's no exception here. The history between Germany and the Jews is far more complicated than any regular historian would actually understand. Um, I, I, in one of my alerts, I referred to Angela Merkel as, um, uh, as the, the, the Archduke. Uh, in the First World War, the Archduke was murdered and it started the ball rolling. As soon as Angela Merkel um, refused to play ball with what these, these negative Americans wanted, and it's just a small group of people in America, please don't think there are thousands of them, it's just a very small handful of very influential men. When she stood up to them, then um, her, her life was always on the line. Now, I think it was a botched attempt on a cavalcade. Uh, and I think that in, in a situation where somebody tries to kill a high-ranking politician, uh, your own viewers and listeners know that the cameras aren't allowed to see anything. But we have seen pictures of a man in handcuffs. 
Um, and that was deliberate because I think what the German authorities were showing the people behind this man and those who would copy his actions, this is what happened. Normally you would have a blank camera, nothing would be shown, you'd just get a very terse a uh, couple of sentences what happened but actually on german television they showed the the four by four uh, and they showed this man with handcuffs on now they did that as a sign we've got him and if you try it again we'll obviously take it further so that was again power politics being played by the media the media didn't understand they were being used but that's happening so it will always be germany because germany geographically is the center of europe uh, in terms of uh, when we had the Cold War, we expected the Russian tanks to come through Germany. In the Winter War, which is the war between Finland and Russia, that was fought up on the cold front. And we have a whole situation along there, but it, Germany is pivotal. And also Germany is a very powerful economy. If you can destroy the German economy, you, you really knock Europe back. So there are many reasons why it would be Germany um, but I think also the, the, the energy is, is part of these people's culture. The, these negative people, they've been successful twice in creating wars in Germany. So why wouldn't they go for third time lucky? Okay. Uh, now, in terms of, uh, you know, the Syria situation, what I was talking about go, getting troops on the ground, can you uh, perhaps address the Armageddon Syrian situation? because that seems an important arm to all of this. Yes, it is. Um, you, you're right. Um, the, the, what we call in England, the game of musical chairs, where suddenly you're about to lose your country, and then you get your country back, and you're out of favor, then you're in favor. There have been a number of countries, including Canada, who have been edging back from the cliff, uh, trying to disassociate themselves with the uh, policies coming out of the United States of America. And I just want to say that this is not an attack on the American people. When I say United States of America, Kerry, I do not mean all the decent millions of people that live in the States. I'm talking about the few people who are making these uh, horrendous judgments. But nevertheless, they are speaking for the American people, although the American people um, don't really know what these, these, these guys are telling other world leaders. But basically... Uh, you look at ISIS, you look at all these so-called terrorist groups that have been funded through the sale of oil, through Saudi Arabia, through other countries. Um, if you're going to start a world war, the days of starting it off in one go won't work because people are media savvy. People now um, are more prone to a gentle build-up. They'll accept it more. So by looking at countries that don't immediately affect the economy, such as Turkey, you can create the mindset in people's eyes that the world is a very unsafe place and wars can break out anywhere. And so therefore people will buy into the concept that it was going to happen anyway, that it was natural, and that the world was ready as a tinderbox to go up. So part of the policy is to create a conflagration but to do it in a way that you take the population with you. It's a form of mind control. It's a form of a game. So yes, Turkey is chosen because Turkey is an incredibly important country. It's part Christian, part Muslim, and it's part of NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And you can divide the country in half, the half that is Christian and is Western, and the half that is Muslim and is not. And it's used as a buffer to keep out the ideas and the energies of the Eastern world, shall we say. That's why Turkey is so important to them. And if that buffer was to go, uh, there are lots of secrets and lots of things that the people in the West don't know that would filter through. So it was a two-pronged two -pronged approach. One was to slap the, the president and their, their, their parliament around the head. And secondly, it was to uh, create uh, an unstable situation that could actually cause uh, more effect on Saudi Arabia, actually, uh, and oil prices. So it's about oil still. Okay. Uh, now, under the circumstances, we have this uh, recent announcement by uh, Obama uh, to the American people. And, and I have to say that that is rather unexpected. Um, it, I was 
uh, assuming there'd be sort of a don domino effect in Europe, but I certainly didn't think that uh, they would start this ball rolling in the United States quite so soon. Um, it, it does sort of uh, portend that they want to make a move soon, um, sooner rather than later, as opposed to, you know, let's say after the election. So this, this is beginning to look like before the election. And it, maybe that works into what you were talking about with uh, there not being an election, uh, there being a reason to stop things. And certainly um, I, all the things about Trump and Hillary, this is uh, very, very possible. Uh, one, I mean, we were told uh, many years ago uh, that Hillary was slated um, by Looking Glass, I believe it was, um, to be the president, uh, to win this election. So uh, whether or not uh, the, um, the polling looks the way they want it to or whether they manipulate it by doing something, uh, that seems to be the way they want to go. Um, now, how they achieve that, I have no idea, but um, it, that's important. The, the clone thing, I, I actually had been told that the clone uh, was already um, done and operational or whatever. Um, and I think it is interesting that right now she's having such pronounced health issues. Um, there is a change, I think, that we're, we're experiencing in the energies uh, around with, with humanity in general, with the awakening going on. Uh, and maybe because of this, the scenario is not set in stone. I have had um, waves of energy. We know that they're activating. I live in California. They're activating harp. I, I can, I'm a sense earth sensitive. I can feel it. Um, the other night they were doing it, uh, which indicates they're about to try something. I don't know what. Um, so I, you know, I, I don't know what you have to say to all that, uh, but there is an escalation. I guess that's the bottom line that I'm seeing here in the United States. And I'm wondering how it relates because, you know, in some ways what they do over in Germany we don't know that it's going to affect us. We know Putin may push back. Um, there's a, a, maybe a detente of kinds. Um, what, where do you, where do you think this is going right now? And I'm also looking at the uh, fall, the autumn uh, equinox as being a, a significant, I don't know, energetic time that they may select. So do you want to address any of that? Sure. The, 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 the clone is right. What it doesn't have is her soul. There is a clone there. <clears throat> she has rejected the taking of her soul into the clone because she knows that how, I must go back a bit. How they've sold it to her is that she's not capable now of running as president. And that what she should do is have a clone with her soul in it that could go out and do the meetings and then in the evening when she wants to sit by the fire she can have her soul back hillary clinton is many things but she's not stupid she knows that once she does that she's finished the real clinton will be dead and destroyed and burned and got rid of and the clone will for intents and purposes so i totally agree with you the clone is up and running but it does not yet contain her soul so that's for clarity um uh President Obama wants the um, uh, collapse to occur after the election, but the people who are really running the show want it before the election. And this is what is causing Obama a great panic and trying to find ways of stopping the election or holding it up. Because his understanding, he's been lied to. His, his deal was that he would finish his term of office, be the first black president, and everything would be hallelujah and wonderful. And then when it all went wrong, it wasn't anything to do with him. Well, hey-ho, these people now are saying to him, we can't wait. And you're absolutely right, Kerry. The timeline, we're on the same timeline, but we're on a different portion of that timeline. They want to push it early. Like many other people, and certainly personally for the last two years, I have said that October of this year was an absolute key date. I'm looking right wrong. It looks like it's earlier. I may be four weeks out, but I've always said October. It could be in September. I could still be right. It could be October. So Obama wants this after his presidency, but the people who are pulling the strings want it before his presidency. 
Now, the announcement about the, the, the water and the food is not to do with um, uh, a war that will wipe out America. It is to do with the disruption of the supply system. Now, I do predict an attack in Britain, my country, and stroke or the United States. This is a false flag attack. Um, I don't see in Britain a, a disruptive bomb. I see it knocking out all of the financial sector. Uh, you're familiar with England very well, but perhaps many of your people are not. We call it the Golden Mile. Uh, we call it the City of London. It is a city within a city. David Icke would always talk about the separate city, and he's quite right. But in the City of London is contained the powerhouse of the world in terms of the stock markets, the stock bonds and shares. If that was disabled and taken out, this would have a huge effect, not just in Great Britain, not just in Europe, but across the world, but predominantly the Western world. So I genuinely see a high probability of an attack to knock out the economic backbone of the Western world and no better way than taking out the city of London. Now, if you can combine that with some form of physical attack in the United States of America, you have all the reason you need to order martial law to bring the troops on the streets, um, to give everybody in the United States who wears a uniform, no matter what that uniform is, to give them the power of a police officer. And that's what they'll do. Uh, and you'll have a situation for three days, three days where their system will work. So people will be knocking on people's door to put them in what you guys have, your FEMA camps. After the third day, that will break down. Uh, and whatever system they are trying to run will not work. So, again, I, I don't want this as a, as a fear-based interview, and neither, neither do you, Kerry, because you and I both passionately know that we're all going to come through this. But the point is that I want people like you do to be aware. So when they see it happening, they don't go into panic mode. They say, oh, yes, I was listening to Kerry Cassidy the other day, um, and this is what she told us. So this will be what happens. I know, now know what I need to do. So uh, key, key countries, Great Britain, North America, and Germany, the three key countries. Now, Russia is key, but Russia actually is absolutely doing nothing. It's keeping out of it. Okay, uh, but there is a question as to, you're saying attack on the financial center, and yet these are the financial guys uh, behind. They are the ones that fund yeah. both sides in a war. Uh, this is part of their motivation to get this thing going, from what I understand. And so I'm wondering, um, are they going to attack themselves? And if that's the case, um, is this a cosmetic attack? Is it, uh, you know, there was a time when uh, we had an attack, uh, y you know, to do with Sandy Hook, et cetera, that I was told was actually by a remote viewer that was linked actually to the financial center in Wall Street and some underground uh, storage uh, kind of computers, I guess you call them, that, uh, you know, had um, secrets, financial secrets, that then they were going to, uh, they actually moved a great deal of money under the cover of the, the distraction of Sandy Hook. And they moved it from there to Colorado, from what I understand, and um, so on. So is something of that sort going on? Because I don't see them, you know, just, destroying their own financial center without some kind of, you know, reason, uh, motivation. Well, when, when the Twin Towers came down, uh, there was a huge amount of gold that was shipped out under the underground passageways, and that was used as a cover, as I know you know, but most people don't know. Um, there's a difference now. There's no money left in the world. There's no real wealth left. It's been sucked out of just about everything. What's left isn't real anymore. And that which is left is either owned by China, George Soros, the Rothschilds, and one or two other few people. So when you've got nothing left, all you can do is put a situation out that the value of a company drops by 60, 70%, uh, although it's valueless, but then you can come in and buy it and make your money. So that's what they've always done with these recessions and have boomed back again. The difference is that they're not attacking themselves. What they're doing is they're saying that the system 
that we have created, we are in uncharted waters. We actually don't know now. We, we made this system. I'm talking to the Rothschilds. They made the system. But for the first time in their own history, they don't know what's around the corner. All they know is that they've sucked out so much wealth that there's very little left for them. And they are quite happy for it just to fall to pieces and then go in and buy it all out. But so there isn't any more secret moving. It isn't a cover to move gold to Mars or move gold to somewhere else. That, that's gone. All the United States has is a great quantity of silver. Uh, the great quantity of gold is in China. So it is not about a, 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 a blind or a false cover. It's actually about wiping everything away and restarting up again because there isn't anything worth saving from their perspective of an economy. You, I, I talked about Deutsche Bank um, that owes so much money that it's literally just a pinprick into a balloon away from completely going. That's how close it is. But, but again, many people don't understand because they, they see banks during the day. But when a bank closes, it does its real business. So from, from about, I don't know, midnight till five or six o'clock in the morning, it's when it does all of its trading, the money that they really make. Now, I can tell you that Deutsche Bank sometimes is within, in American terms, just a few hundred thousand dollars short of going broke each time they trade during these closed hours. That's how close it is. So we need to understand that well, if one major bank goes, I predict economically it will be between four and six times worse than when Lehman Brothers went down. Now, so between four to six times worse. So we can then understand that a large um, hypermarket, <clears throat> it orders its food at midnight, and then the lorry arrives at five o'clock in the morning. So they've ordered it all electronically. Now, if that system goes down, um, there's no way for people to, to buy because their money can't travel electronically. Then there's no more food in the supermarkets. That's why the governments are saying you need two weeks worth of food and water because they think it'll take them two weeks to get the system back up and running. Now, I quickly want to talk about my country. <clears throat> Excuse me, because again, American people will know very little. In this country, you can hold up to seventy-five thousand pounds in the bank, and the bank has made it quite clear that if an emergency arises, it will take all your money. So if you have a hundred pounds or seventy-five thousand pounds, the bank will take your money. They made that absolutely clear to everybody in Great Britain, but in um, 21 days, they'll give it back to you. But if you have anything more than 75,000 pounds, they'll take all of it, but they'll only give you back 75,000 pounds. The rest they will keep. Now that's robbery. If someone does that to you in the street, that's called a robbery and you call 911 and et cetera, et cetera. But no, no, this is gonna be legal because the banks are going to do it. So I've been saying to people, get your money out the bank, stick it under your bed because what may happen if we lose these major banks is that one minute to midnight everyone's bank account will be emptied electronically so you'll go to your cash machine it won't give you anything but you will get back uh, up to seventy-five thousand pounds in, in great britain but on the 21st day so but people don't see it this has officially been handed out it's an official policy but people are so programmed that as long as the shops are open, as long as they can get money out, they just think it won't happen. So in this country, it's quite clear that there's a fallback position to take the money from the citizens and only give a part of it back. Do you have something like that in the States, Kerry? Uh, well, yes, I believe it's it's the federal um, insurance, <clears throat> reserve insurance, I don't know, um, but it has to do with uh, there is a limit, uh, you know, you're federally insured, your bank account, uh, in most cases, that's what they call it. Um, and it's up to, or, you know, a certain limit. Uh, but I do believe that they can go in and take your money. Uh, and that, you know, 
they, I mean, they can play with these rules anyway. Um, you're saying even in Britain, in 21 days, they would give it back to you, but there's no guarantee they would do that. Um, you know, we're in a changing timeline, you know, a changing situation. So all, you know, the all game sort of rules, all, the game is, is, is really out there. Um, you know, all bets are off, as they say. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, Greece is maybe a perfect example, uh, what's gone on there. Um, so FDIC may be very suspicious uh, anyway, um, because it's part of the Fed and the Fed is part of the problem. Um, and that's linked directly to the World Bank and is a privately owned corporation, as they say. So, um, you know, you'd have to kind of go down that road. I'm not a, you know, a financial expert, but it would certainly be an interesting discussion to have with someone uh, about that. Um, so <clears throat> your warning is, 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 you know, excellent. And I believe that you, you did actually say some things to, about this on our Malta video um, <clears throat> that we, that I put out for free on YouTube. Um, however, uh, I'm wondering if, um, if this is changing, you know what I mean? If, if this is um, morphing, and I'm wondering exactly how it might be morphing. In other words, you're talking about the United States and certain deadlines, et cetera. But in terms of Britain and in terms of this setup, they've got now a setup, you might call it, along the, the Russian border. And uh, China is also being notifying their people, for example, uh, and also making sort of, uh, I, I actually linked it on my website. There's an article to do with this interview that we're doing. It's on that page. Uh, if you go to my website, projectcamelotportal.com, uh, where China is, you know, there have been a lot of issues. I think it's in the South China Sea, uh, if I recall. Yeah. And uh, there are some, some threats going on between the U.S. and China in that area. Um, and China is... Um, there's something going on with that. And then they may also get pulled in according to the prophecies, uh, you know, and this has to do with the Billy Meyer Henuk prophecies as well. China is supposed to get uh, pulled into the Syrian uh, situation. And there are some, some movement to, to try to make that happen. Um, any, any thoughts on all of that? Interesting. Um, China is, is, is the big problem for the state simply because it now holds the currency, it holds the gold. It's one third of the world's gold now is held by Russian banks, uh, I beg your pardon, uh, Chinese banks. Um, however, it's, it's really odd because you're quite right, that's playing out very seriously on one hand, but on the other hand, you have Chinese and Russian ships uh, and American ships working together to blockade some of the gold coming out from South Sea Island mine from the Rothschilds. So on one hand, those countries are working together to put pressure on the Rothschilds. And on another hand, they're actually almost at war with each other. Um, China did a deal or part of China did a deal with uh, the banking system of America saying that if they were to move across to a silver stroke gold standard, and if they were to give up uh, some of their individuals, then um, they would be given the codes to be part of the new world banking system. Uh, there was a very high level <clears throat> meeting in Britain some weeks ago now to debate uh, this offer and the executive, let's just call them that, uh, agreed it and that was then passed to the membership which is many of the top families of the world who then also agreed that. So what we have is a situation where one half of the American administration is saying, listen, we need to survive. Um, we need to swallow our pride and work with the, the Chinese. And that's why the International Monetary Fund, that's headed by a woman actually, she's very able, um, which is totally American organization funded by the Americans, has basically turned around and said, yeah, we're going to work with the Chinese. So you've got the financial side recognizing that it's staring down a huge hole and it needs to survive, and yet you have the politicians and some of the what I call crazies who are hell bent on some form of escalation, which they think will save them. Some form of 
um, military activity which somehow will save their skins. But this is the problem when, when, when we're viewing this, we're not viewing a coordinated, you go to the theatre and someone's written a play and all the actors should be acting out the play, they will have their lines. What we've got here is almost like four or five people have written different lines and you have a play but they're not all doing what they're supposed to do. So when we look at it, it's quite discerningly difficult to say, well, which group is this with? Which group is that with? So you're right to highlight it because it shows that there, um, look, for instance, the United States Navy is probably the most um, um, sensible arm of the American armed forces. Uh, they are the most, uh, independent, well, they were the ones that got hit at the Pentagon when the 9-11 took place. It was the Navy's offices that got blown up because they have always been independent. They've always tried to put the earth first. They've put their children and their grandchildren first, unlike some of the other armed forces, which um, are so separated from, from the people that they are separate. So all I can say to you is that um, it's very hard to keep a handle on it because there are many different uh, uh, games, I don't like the word, but there are many different games being played now simultaneously. So yes, you're right to, to pick that up. Okay, um, <clears throat> thank you. At this time, I, I, know, I don't want to keep you too long, but uh, we are having questions on the chat. This is a live show. I'm happy to take some, it's okay. Okay, great. Uh, so I will look at the chat now. I, I know people have been putting questions, but as you can appreciate, if it's all in lowercase, then it all looks like chat to me. So if you can put your questions again uh, in all caps, I can grab them much quicker and that will be very helpful. So thank you if you can repeat your questions in all caps. I'll try to grab your questions as I skim here um, and not take too much time. So uh, Something about if you follow when U.S. tried to pay back Chinese shipload of gold for our debt, the Chinese drilled into the gold and found it was not real. Uh, so is that an, you know, I mean, we, yes, we've heard that. Uh, did, do you want to say anything about that? Well, it's true. Um, <laughs> what happened was that the, the Chinese always want their payment in gold. Um, the, the people and the world are told that all the gold is held in Fort Knox. Of course, it's not. There's nothing in Fort Knox. It was in Hong Kong and Shanghai Bank, actually, uh, but it's not there now anymore. It's probably on Mars, um, but that's a whole new story. So we'll just keep on with, with that. Um, the gold was uh, delivered, apparently, and in the Western world, uh, for people who are not familiar with gold shipments, what happens is that uh, it's done by weight and numbers. And all you do is you load it onto a forklift truck and you check the weight and the numbers and that's all you do. You ship this weight of gold around, but not the Chinese. They had a tip off. So they drilled in and I believe the metal was tungsten. They were 24 karat gold plated tungsten bars. And I believe that's right because tungsten has the same specific gravity as gold. So it will come up as the same weight. So this didn't call what caused World War III. And the Chinese said, right, you don't have any gold to pay us. We'll have real estate. That is why so much of American ports and uh, toll bridges are owned by the Chinese. Um, is it Boston Harbor, I think, is totally owned by the Chinese. And so America had to give away real estate because that's all it had left to give. The, the Chinese did not want useless bits of paper dollars, which are no good to them. They want tangible assets. And so every time a ship lands in port, it pays a tax. Every time the goods come in, they're taxable. That doesn't go to the United States anymore. It goes straight to China. Every time someone drives over a bridge, they pay a toll. That's going to China. So that's absolutely true. From that moment onwards, the Chinese realized they had the United States, as we say in England, over a barrel because the uh, Yanks had no more gold and therefore China could then start to really put the squeeze on, and that's exactly what they've done. Okay, uh, there is, let me just say though, that, uh, you know, the, um, the Oregon standoff uh, and also the Bundy Ranch, uh, these are land grabs that we're aware of, and uh, there is a consortium to do with uh, 
uranium, as it happens, that uh, Hillary in, and uh, certain uh, very wealthy individuals and et cetera, and maybe the secret space program is a beneficiary, but they have uh, sort of, they're doing business together in the, the Pacific Northwest. And um, I think uh, Canada as well, uh, to tell you the truth. Um, but th this is significant because uh, China is, on the one hand, um, you know, they're, they're having some standoffs in the, in the South China Sea, et cetera. But on the other hand, uh, they're working very closely in partnership to grab land, uh, in part because of what they want to do underneath the, the land, I'm told, uh, more than anything else. And, and one of the things is, of course, getting things like uranium and other precious metals out of the ground and, and so on. So um, are you aware of that? I wasn't aware of the mineral. I wasn't sure of the mineral, but I know that um, uh, China has reached the point now where it's polluting its own country to, to such an extent that, that in the next five years it will no longer expand. Uh, and, and I tip India. India will be the next China, but that'll take them longer. So what the Chinese are doing is saying, um, we are looking at materials that make microcircuit boards. We're looking at materials that um, are, are, the stockpiles are very low of certain materials. And so if you can hold the stockpiles of these key elements, and gold is not one of them, but if you hold these key elements, um, platinum, uh, uranium, other metals that you use in manufacturing, but manufacturing of very high-end electronics, um, and also, you did mention the, the secret space program. Yes. And there are a number of metals which, when added to something else, will pass. And they're not as good as off-planet materials, because some of those minerals we can't find on Earth. But they will allow certain um, alloys or metals to be made. So there are, there are organizations within organizations who are trying to protect their own piece of real estate, their own empire, so that they can maintain. For instance, the Americans say, no matter what happens, we have to have it, the fleet. We have to have a fleet. So if you have a secret space program, you would say, well, um, what will we do? Shall we sell ourselves off to the highest bidder? So no whatever happens to the United States of America, the secret space program is an asset. So what will it do? Will it go and sell itself to someone else, or will it become a special police force all of its own? These are the questions that are seriously being asked. Right, absolutely. Okay, um, now I'm looking into the chat. Uh, someone says they've got a family investing money in many U.S. banks. Uh, do you recommend those investments be moved? Right, well, I'm not going to make a, a announcement like that. <laughs> because um, the way the world works is that someone will come knocking on my door saying, you told me to do this. And what I would say is I personally am not investing in any banks at the moment. I am uh, aware that, that the money in the bank could be taken tomorrow. And there is no safe place in the system to put money. Uh, gold is now reaching a level that's quite high. Um, silver's still quite good, uh, platinum is quite good, um, and gold I think will go higher, but it's, you know, if you were buying gold three or four years ago, then you would be quite good on that. But bear in mind that you cannot go to your local store with an ingot of gold and say, I want food. What you have to do is you have to go to a dealer. Now, how likely is it? that that dealer is going to be in a position to buy that gold off you? Won't he be attacked? Won't there be hordes of people outside? So we need to think it through. Um, I think people are better off investing in food and water uh, and, and something that's tangible. I mean, I've said to people, I did a conference a few months back, and I said, if you're in the process of selling the house, hurry up. Hurry up and buy your house because that can't be taken off you. So. I personally wouldn't be investing any money in, in a bank at the moment. That's my best answer. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> some people are saying some kind of wild uh, questions here. So uh, I want to... I don't mind if, if they're logical uh, questions. Well, uh, saying things like, how do we overthrow the government and uh, the elites? 
um, and and basically, you know, in other words, I think what's what's coming through here is, is and you know, at least with, and and keep in mind, this is going worldwide. Uh, I yes. have a worldwide audience, so some of these people are in America and some are in other countries. I think what they're basically saying is, what do we do? That's really the question behind there. Not so much, um, you know, overthrowing a government is is not what's going to happen, uh, you know. But go ahead. Uh, if you want to address anything to do with that, well, that's what happened in um, Iceland. They overthrew their own government. Um, it was not reported, and I, I keep on telling people because it's so important that the people in Iceland went off the streets, off the sidewalk went into the parliament building, physically threw their lawmakers out onto the street. And I think three bankers were jailed. So that's a bloodless revolution. That's not violent. That's just ejecting uh, people who obviously weren't fit for office. Uh, I don't uh, ever say to people, um, you need an armed revolution. I think we leave that to the military. I think there are plenty of people who are uh, military men and women in different countries who have absolutely no intention of their children, their grandchildren, their own parents, their brothers and sisters um, being treated badly. And so there will always be a small proportion of military men who will do whatever they're told, even if that's shoot on their own citizens. But the vast majority of the military will not do it and they will turn on their own government. So it won't have to come from the citizens. What the citizens have to do is push back. What the citizens have to say is, I'm not doing that. That's illegal. You can't make me do something illegal. Right. And that pushback will prick the conscience of everybody who has an official position. And that is what will cause the change. So what on a more positive note for, for people on the ground is um, form groups, form support networks, find people like yourself who, who believe in what you believe, Put some food and water aside, keep it hidden, don't discuss that with people outside of your families or your groups. Share information, um, ensure that you have someone in your group who understands medicines, a uh, first aider, a doctor, a nurse. Do things like in the United States of America call the prepper community. Build a network where you can look after yourselves. But you no, know, I'm not advocating violence at all. Okay. Um... So some people are saying they want to leave the United States and where should they go? Um, <laughs> it's an interesting uh, conundrum. Russia. <laughs> and that surprised everybody. Um, if you want to go to a country that uh, until the terrible um, uh, recession, which the American government caused by altering the oil prices, uh, Russia had the greatest um, growth uh, for its community than any other country in the world. Russia was actually paid almost all of its debt off. Uh, pensions had gone up, wages had gone up, standard of living had gone right up. And then, of course, America attacked Russia by affecting the oil price, trying to force the oil price down. Um, okay, that was a half, half joke there. It doesn't really matter where you go, because wherever you go, you are going to be impacted by something. And I think that running away is not the answer. I think it's about saying, okay, I love wherever you live. Um, if you are on a flood plane, you might wish to consider if you have the capability of moving, then moving. But if you're not, um, then you just say, I'm going to make the best of it here. Because if we accept the worst is going to come, then maybe the worst will come. But if we say, um, actually, I don't think the worst is going to come. It's just going to be a small problem, which we can get over, then our consciousness uh, will force good energy in. So I think you stay where you are unless you've got family or friends. Look, if, if I had a three-month-old baby and I was away somewhere working, I think I'd want to get back to where my family was. So I would I would say that. If you, if you have the option of living in two or three places, then yes, then do it. Right. Uh... Okay, I'm, I'm again scanning this chat here. Um, someone wants to know, um, coastal cities have spirals carved into rocks that our ancestors see, something like the Nor Norway spiral. So there, 
it's kind of a it's it's more of an ancient sites uh, question. Um, do you want to answer it? Yes, um, we 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 can talk of the situation about Lumeria and Atlantis um, and how the arrogance and the, um, the drive for corrupt power and technology caused two supposedly very great nations to 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 destroy themselves, but nevertheless led to the Agathan movement, the Hollow Earth movement, um, and how. Um, this is imprinted in our psyche of, of, of tidal waves and water coming across. And we've got several situations. We've got the, um, the potential of Planet X or Nibiru um, causing some form of tidal disturbance. We've got the potential of um, a neutron-type bomb being detonated off the Canary Isles, which would cause a man-made tidal wave. And many, many cultures who have had the remote viewing capability, we shouldn't just think, you know, it's 21st or 20th century people. In fact, it was greater and it was shared more by non-elite people back in those days and who have divined many timelines where they've seen uh, cataclysmic ends. And so one of the best ways to do that is to leave some form of marker or carving or statue near where the ocean is and um, perhaps to say to the ocean please don't do it again or perhaps to say to people this is the the way marker because this is a point that is dangerous so i am aware of those um and there are many more which the, the authorities have destroyed and have removed yes uh so someone wants to know if you think there will be they're calling it an alien invasion uh if the war starts um i've always <laughs> we already have an ahead. alien invasion by the way but go right ahead uh, i've been quite careful with the planet x nibiru situation simply because there is an arm of the elite who would like to use the potential of nibiru as a false flag in other words to say this is an alien invasion um, and we need martial law, et cetera, et cetera. And I've always said to people, if you are being encouraged to observe something, it must be fake. If you are being told there's nothing there, don't waste your time, move along, please. It's obviously real because <laughs> what the authorities only want to show you what they want to show you. So be aware if you are told to go down and buy little telescopes and protect your eyes from the sun and you can see this and you can see that's because they want you to see it. That's because they wish to manipulate it. So, um, false flag alien invasion, yes, still very much on the cards. Uh, I've always, for the last four years, warned that the American elite have first generation black triangle flying craft given to them by grey aliens. Uh, they've back engineered that. They have little grey aliens with no soul in that are robotic. They have already shot footage of supposed firefights between plasma weapon armed greys and Navy SEALs, which would be shown on Fox News and CNN as a, as a fight between the brave boys of the United States of America and the aliens. Um, and that's already the role. Mm -hmm. So don't think that 2001 Space Odyssey was the, the one and only uh, attempt at creating moon landings. But this is just one card in a hand of cards that these people play. The difficulty is, and you said it earlier today, Kerry, quite succinctly, that their time is so narrow now. Um, the end of 2016 is when they've got to play their final cards. They've got to do it because 2017 is, is, is whatever they've been dealt with in 2017. There's no more replenishment. There's no more cards. So whatever hand they lay on the table in 2017, that's what they're playing for. At the moment, they're still passing cards to each other, but they've only got one or two. So that's the way I would try to describe the situation they're in. Okay. Uh, yes, I think that's probably quite accurate. Uh, let's see. Somebody wants to know um, the best... It's sort of an obvious question, but I think it's worth uh, talking about. Uh, during these difficult times, what is the best attitude to maintain? Uh, it's a lovely question, and that's a really nice one to, to have. Um, strength, determination, and confidence. Confidence that, that we didn't all of us come here to die. We didn't all come on this planet to say, that's it, okay, off we go. We came here to evolve. We came here to go forward 
um, and we came here to create life, whatever that might be. That's what we came here for. Um, just because a few mad, crazy people want to do something doesn't mean it has to happen. If the vast majority of the human race wake up and say, you can't do that in my name, it will not happen. So what I need people to do personally, and I do that with my Connecting Consciousness group, uh, is to form groups, pass the emails, pass your phone numbers, uh, meet regularly, both physically and online. If all that system comes down, have CB radios, try and be in touch. And if you can't be in touch, have gone through it in your mind enough how you're going to stay strong. If you have food, you have water, stay indoors. And remember, if you've got pets, please make sure you've got food for those pets because they won't be stored in the supermarket. And all you have to do is to say, this will work its way out. We have to have this to come out strong with the other end. And whatever you're told, if you're told to go to a meeting station to be inoculated, do not go. Do not have inoculations. They're not necessary and they're, they're negative. So if you're told to come out at the eight o'clock in the morning and meet at some place and you're going to be picked up by by lorries taken to a safe place don't do it if you've got your food and your water you're safe so be strong um but please remember that most of the information you're going to hear through the official channels is simply there to lie to you so right. that's what i'm saying okay um and uh Someone wants to know, I think it's, this is a worthwhile question. Uh, you know, they're flooding Europe, uh, as we know, with uh, refugees. And uh, there is a, an end game involved uh, with this whole move. And that does seem to be factoring into the whole uh, Angela Merkel situation as well. Uh, it, there is seems to be some kind of big deal uh, to do with, now I don't know whether she, what her game is in this sense, but she, lowered the bar so that more refugees could come into Germany, let's say, than go other places. Uh, do you have anything to say about that? Yes, she did. Um, there's upwards of, I mean, it's staggering, upwards of one million uh, economic migrants, that's the British term, refugees is another word, but over a million, over a million people uh, who probably don't speak the language, don't dress the same, don't look the same. And that was part of destabilizing. Um, in the Second World War, uh, Nazi Germany dropped as many bombs on the city of London in Great Britain as they could, thinking that they would break the spirit of London. They never did. The reason was that in every street, somebody knew somebody. Your grandparents lived five doors from, from the sister, and your sister lived ten doors from your brother. Everybody got together at night. They all played cards together. They made tea or coffee. Or they sang. They, they did all that. If I bring in a million people who don't speak my language, don't dress the same way as I do, don't go to the same church I do, uh, don't eat the same food I do, and then bombs start falling or something happens, there isn't that cohesion to create that strength of society. The whole point about bringing these F refugees in was when the supermarkets close, when there's no more um, uh, social security handouts, you will have one million angry men who don't speak the language going on a rampage. And it destabilizes the country, it keeps the police busy, it keeps the army busy, and it totally leaves you at the um, control of elite people outside that's the whole reason for flooding Europe. With these people are victims, let me make this clear, I do not have anything against these migrants. If I went to a group of migrants who had no food, no water, no opportunity, and said, listen, if you travel 500 miles over to this country, you'll get a job and money, of course you'd go. So they were lied to. They were lied to. I've seen the pictures of queues of women and children walking, walking for miles because they think life will be better. It's a cruel lie. And they were used as political pawns to put pressure on governments and destroy it. And just to finish off your question, because you said why you were asking in your own way, um, Kerry, why did Angela Merkel agree to it? And I said in one of my first uh, alerts was that the elite had turned against Angela Merkel because Angela Merkel had played the game. She'd done everything they wanted, brought in these migrants, and then she realized that 
she was signing her own death warrant. She was going to destroy the country. And she'd have no job. Let's be blunt about it. She'd have nothing to be chanced of. So she started backtracking. And the moment she started backtracking, because she saw that she had no control over a country. American tanks are active in Germany. Nobody asked her permission. It's like the nuclear submarines that are Great Britain. But we can't fire them. The only person who can fire those missiles is America. So no sovereign country actually has a sovereign government. And so individual governments now are beginning to say, whoa, I don't want this. Because it will be Angela Merkel, who is surrounded by mobs of angry German people, to be held to account. It won't be someone in America. So these European leaders are now realizing that they better do something quickly. And that's what's playing out now. Okay. Uh, there is also the aspect, though, um, that this is an Illuminati ploy to uh, create a, uh, a police um, force, a one world police force, uh, and starting with Europe, actually, and that this uh, the influx of the of the migrants creates, uh, you know, chaos and then they want to bring order out of chaos and then oh by the way we need to have a united police force to keep order in in these countries um this has been posited and it does seem very likely that this one world government you see i mean of course as everyone knows everything that is is you know the, the financial reset all of it is aimed at this getting this one world uh, government. Well, a one world government needs a one world police force. And uh, it seems in some ways they have it already, uh, in my view. But nonetheless, can you address that? Uh, you're, you're accurate. The only problem that they underestimated was that uh, they would have to bring in people that didn't speak the language of the country they were policing. Um, no, well, no, but very few Americans would undertake the type of uh, orders that they would need to be given. So that's why you have actually large numbers of people from the old Yugoslavia, uh, Serbia, who are finding themselves suddenly in NATO uniform. So there is a large number of people from the Eastern European bloc who are now um, in NATO uniform. But it can't work because they will not have enough you know, you couldn't have very many Americans in America doing that. We'll have to speak a different language. So think of all your countries. It's a plan that they've had for 20 years, at least to my knowledge, but they don't have the manpower. So that, that can't work. It might work in one or two countries, but it, it isn't going to work. Um, you would say, right, we're going to have this one world police force or one European police force. People are going to be so untrusting by that time of their leaders that this is, it can't work. The ability of uh, world leaders to engage with their public is nearly at zero anyway. Uh, it's, it's one of those plans that, like wiping out 75% of the world population, was on the table, disappeared, and has come back again. Both, both of those actually have recently come back on the table, to my knowledge. But they've come back on the table because they, they can't find anything else. So it's not so much that that's what they're going to try and do, is that they've just come back full circle. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, I'm, I'm gonna look for some more questions here. Uh, I, I, you know, it did occur to me uh, that that there is some question. I, I'm hearing other people, you know, uh, points of view being put out there as to, you know, what's happening in the world, et cetera. And one of the uh, things that I saw recently was saying how Brexit was, um, you know, working counter to uh, what they want. And um, I was struck by the, the thought because you, you actually were um, – we're talking about the very top of the pyramid and how they wanted Brexit. And I was told by Cameron Faley, one of my witnesses, who's gone dark, as they say, um, who was not correct about everything in terms of timing, but he was a very, he's a very good analyst when it comes to the banking sector and the Middle East. Um, superb, really, analyst. And one of the things he said, uh, like a, several months before the whole Brexit thing happened, 
was that the city of London was going to orchestrate a situation in which they would separate from the rest of England. Um, and that that was in the plans. And this is what he was told. And then we had Brexit and all of a sudden city of London was isolated. And now we actually have the, the potential for an attack on the city of London as well. So do you want to address any of that? I, I totally agree with everything you said. Um, the 75, 80, 95% of the world's elite all wanted Great Britain to stay within the European Union and all believed that the voters of Great Britain would keep the country within Europe and it would be steady as she goes. A handful of people who were at the very top of the pyramid decided as part of the destabilizing plan that they would make sure that Britain voted to leave Brit exit. Now, it doesn't mean that they altered the, the ballot papers or the counting machines. What actually happened was that they ensured that their friends in the media, night after night after night, ran images of uh, non-European people, desperately hungry, uh, pushing through borders, uh, rioting and fighting. And you have to ask yourself, uh, if people are so media savvy, why would they show these images in Great Britain on major national television and major newspapers every day of the week? That's because they knew every time they did that, there was another vote to leave. So the plan was, and your, your um, informant is absolutely correct, was that Britain would leave Europe, but the city of London would be floated away. It's already like Capitol Hill and like the Vatican, it's a separate entity, um, uh, and that would be separate and therefore could carry on the trade, but actually would be separate from the government of England, and therefore would become its own entity and very much more powerful. Wouldn't have to um, pay homage to anybody. And that was uh, literally uh, put forward by the new mayor of London. He'd only been in office a few days and he then just came out with this nonsense. Um, oh, well, you know, um, the city of London could be separate. Well, that's died to death. It was on the table, but they looked into the, uh, the possibility of it. And if you were going to be knocked out anyway, what difference does it make? If someone's going to come and curtail all your business, it doesn't matter whether you're going to be part of a country or separate, you will cease to exist. And because there is a very serious plan to make the city of London temporarily cease to exist, that's dropped off the table because that's not their big concern. Now, their big concern is just surviving. So yes, that information, as far as I'm concerned, is absolutely accurate, but like so many things, what is accurate at one minute to midnight on Monday is not necessarily accurate at one minute past on the following day. Okay, uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm scanning this and, you know, I, um, we'll see if, uh, if there's anything that that I can ask uh, for on behalf of the these questions here, uh, uh, okay. Um, someone wants to know if Snowden's alive. I mean, he's broadcast recently, so I think he's very much alive. Uh, if you have any comments, you're welcome. Oh. Let's talk about the, the number of very good people who have left the planet recently. Many of them have been murdered. Many of them have looked as if they've committed suicide or drugs overdose or something. And in most cases, they've been removed because they were a threat. Um, there have been some some very, very lovely people who have gone. Um, and it's a great shame that black magicians have been very active and targeting good people. It's because it's the end game, not the end of the world, but the end game for these people. And I think that these people are full of malice, full of anger, and they are just striking out now at people who they have come into contact with, and for whatever reason, they really dislike. Um, so I won't name any names, but there has been some, some very um, wonderful, beautiful people who, who have left before their time simply because somebody took a dislike to them. Uh, those people who have, like Julia Assange, who have um, spoken out um, and uh, created websites and um, 
put real names to real faces uh, have been attacked simply because uh, somebody is just angry. There's no, it's not about justice. It's about these people are crazy. I need to explain that. They're, they're, they're sick in the head, these black magicians, and they will just attack somebody for no apparent reason other than they feel slighted by them. And so we need to be aware that uh, just because somebody dies and may have, may have taken drugs, it doesn't mean they died of a drugs overdose. I'm not going to mention the person. I get very cross with certain aspects on a particular website, which I won't mention, um, but you have contact with, where uh, somebody dies and then everyone or many people come out and start saying um, this person was a druggie or, or what have you. Did they ever meet that person? Did they ever know? So I would just say to people, hold on a moment. There is a war going on in the unseen world, in the air, in the ether, between the forces of good and the forces of not so good. And rather than um, wasting your time writing this than the other, I would say to people, why don't you go and support the forces of good? Why don't you do something positive? You know, that might be donate to Kerry's site. It might be go and help David Icke. It might be whatever it might be, but do something positive. Do something to help the planet because every little helps. And if the balance is like that, let's just put one more dime or nickel on the end of that and tip it over for good. And I need everybody actually who believes in truth and justice not to sit in their armchair and um, you know moan and, and, and groan, but do something, do something positive. Absolutely, uh, very, very true. Uh, uh, let me say that um, th there is something going on, um, uh, I'm sorry, with, uh, with, with, with London at the moment. And uh, I am wondering in terms of, you know, because there will be British people that see this. And, um, you know, I, I love London. I, I've had the opportunity to spend quite a bit of time in England recently. And um, I don't know, you know, some people have a problem with London, but I, I love London. And I think it's a, you know, it's a very international city. Um, it, you know, this, possible attack, uh, you know, do you have any advice for people that are traveling, uh, you know, to, to and from London, uh, what situation they might encounter, how to react, how to deal? Well, I think the, what I, what I would say to, to people um, is very, very clear. If you are traveling uh, over that key period, you will get disrupted. There's no question of that. Uh, you will have your passport checked 20,000 times. Uh, two seconds. Hold on a moment. Um, we did lose contact with Simon right then. So um, let me see if I can get him back um, or wait and see if, if he comes back. Um, and, and I'm going to hopefully. OK, here he is. Hi, Simon. Oh, sorry, that's very, that's very, um, very useful. We just had the police at the door. Oh, you're kidding. Okay, no, very it's all right. interesting. It's okay. It's all right. All right. Just, wanted to, just wanted to know if everything was all right. <laughs> okay, that's well, absolutely. that's like a subtle warning. That's, that's unbelievable. Well, everything is all right, so we'll just carry on then. Yeah, um, fascinating. So basically, the, the disruption will be on to the economy. Maybe they didn't like my statement uh, or question. I just don't like the truth. Um, Yes, it, it, it's literally planes aren't going to drop out of the sky. That's not what's going to happen. What is going to happen is that uh, there'll be a lockdown um, and and it'll be very hard for a few days to obtain the basic staples of life. So I suggest that people don't travel in October, but you know it could be earlier than that. I've been saying October for the last two, three years, but the way things are panning out, someone's trying to push this agenda earlier. Um, all I can say is that please watch the gold price, watch the silver price, and if you see a sudden spike, you've got between 12 hours and 24 hours before something happens, because the elite always know when the Twin Towers came down, United Airlines shares changed dramatically some 12 hours or so beforehand. So there's always a, there's a money killing to be made, and people will be involved in that. If you have to travel, then you have to travel. But I personally wouldn't travel in the month of October. 
Okay, uh, very, very interesting. I, I, I need to go now because the situation downstairs is somewhat interesting, Kerry, so... Um... Right. Okay, well, I think we've covered a great deal of ground anyway, and uh, so it's thank you so much, Simon, for coming on the show and uh, for putting yourself on the line in this way. Um, we've had quite a substantial audience. I think we have over 1,500 live viewers. That's uh, got to be a record on YouTube, I, I would say. Live, we're talking live viewers here on YouTube. Well, well I mean, the fact that the, the police turned up on the house during this uh, yeah. uh, and are outside now, uh, please don't have any concern. Don't let the, the audience be concerned for me. I'm perfectly fine. Nothing bad is going to happen. Okay. All okay. right. Uh, bless you and take stay safe. And uh, I'm sure you will be. And uh, thank you again. And, and hopefully we'll be back in touch in the, in the near future. Oh, we most definitely will be. God bless to you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye to all your listeners and viewers. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, I, I, we had a very interesting show last night with Jim Mars and uh, Dick Allgaier, and we did talk about the August event. There is some interpretation that still needs to be done and some analysis, and the show was absolutely excellent, and I highly recommend it. It, it is on my YouTube channel uh, where you are now. And this, this show, if you missed any part of it, will go directly onto my YouTube channel as well. So um, I understand that there has been an explosion to do with SpaceX in uh, Cape Canaveral, from what I understand. I'm not sure the details. I need to look into that. This has uh, happened just recently. It may uh, relate to the, the remote viewing situation uh, in August, uh, specifically the Dick Algeyer. Um, information and you will hear if you listen to my remote viewing uh, discussion last night that I was uh, a strong advocate for saying that something had not yet happened uh, that related to the specific viewing especially to uh, Dika Algar. So here we have something that uh, may have some relationship, I don't know. So uh, thank you for listening and um, you know stay optimistic uh, understand that we are going through a change that is all about bringing in uh, a complete change of consciousness on the planet. There are some hard, hard knocks that some people need to go through to wake up, and this is part of it. So um, stand together, you know, um, work with friends and family, and uh, and I guess prepare is is uh, all we can do. So. Um, Anything else you can do is stay positive and, and try, um, you know, even the trolls, uh, please stop your negative doings and uh, try to understand and be sympathetic to the state of humanity at this time and see what positive things you can do for humanity rather than trying to break down those who are putting out the truth. All right. Thank you again and um, have a great day. Bye-bye.